This is Unleashing Leadership. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Travis Moss, CEO of Seed Planning Group, and my co-host here is Dave Nurchi, the Chief Operating Officer of Seed Planning Group. And this podcast is all about how we implement takeaways from great books into our business. And today we are working on a takeaway from the book Build by Tony Fidel. So um, our takeaway, Dave, not exactly a takeaway, uh, more of why we picked this book. So we're transitioning from the hard thing of, uh, about hard things by Ben Horowitz. We finished that. We baked that thing for like three months. Uh, we took it out of the oven. We're going to let it sit there and cool. We've moved on to the book Build. And uh, I wanted to start out with really why we picked this book and what's so great about that. But before we get too far into that, um, as always, listeners, do us a favor, like and subscribe to us wherever you're listening or watching. And if you don't regularly do that, if this is the first time where maybe you just have never liked, subscribed, or left a review, consider making us your special exception, maybe the first time. Every time someone likes or subscribes to us or gives us a good review, it helps other people find the show. And wouldn't it be great? At least I think it would be great. Dave, I think you think it would be great. It'd be great. Um, tell me if, if I'm wrong about this, but wouldn't it be awesome to fill our companies with more people that strive to grow personally and professionally? Um, we do have a sponsor for today. This show is brought to you by Ditch the Suits, 2023 Podcast of the Year in all categories by Cool Podcast Agency. On that show, we focus on helping you get more out of your money and life. Check it out, ditchthesuits.com or wherever podcasts can be found. Okay, Dave, so back to us. We want to kind of dip our toe into this book build um, and what's so great about it, why we picked it, kind of what we're looking forward to for the next, um, I think this series is going to probably be another two or three months as well. So I'll give you the floor first. I might heckle you a little bit more, but I'll give you the floor first. I would expect nothing less. In the, <laughs> the we promise more maybe. heckling this season, right? right? I think we were talking about that before. We're gonna we're gonna try to heckle a little bit more. Love it. Yeah, I think this book. I mean, Tony's perspective, right? That that's what makes the book. I think his whole approach of taking action, right, and and doing, and not just like like the theoretical or kind of learning by reading something or or, you know, learning in a classroom or something like that. He's all about doing and taking action. And even if you don't have all the answers or the full path right away, you still got to take action and you learn and it's okay to fail as long as you're learning along the way and you keep doing. So that's what it just, it kind of, it really hit home of how, you know, we operate at Seed and and just taking action, right. And, And making things happen because, you could sit there and, and talk about things all day and, and nothing's going to happen. But if you take action, you're going to move the ball forward. So yeah. I, I love that perspective uh, of the book and how, and how Tony presents it. Yeah. I think we could also, we could be like, well, who's Tony Fidel? I mean, if you read the book, you're going to know. And as we go through the book, you're going to know. I mean, he's basically the guy who is behind the iPod, <laughs> yep. the iPhone, iPhone Nest, Nest thermostat. I mean, right. like this is the guy in the shadows that's been changing people's lives now for the better part of a couple of decades. Yep. Um, but I think what's cool about him is he's just, he's not a talker, meaning he, he talks a lot in this book, right? Yeah. But he talks about shit that he's actually done. He's not one of those fake experts that tells you about all the stuff everybody else has done and right. why they're successful. He just comes right out and is like, this is what I did and this is what was great about it and 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 how it worked. And this is the stupid shit that we did that didn't work. And, right. you know, here's my advice about that and where I would go next. And And he not only was successful at one thing, he was successful at multiple things. And then after those things went on and continues to be successful. So, um, and that's a good point you made about, he's not a, not a talker, right? Because he says that in the intro of the book about, he didn't know where to start. Or he's not a writer. He didn't know like how to talk about this. So, you know, he, he just shared his ideas and experiences and what happened throughout his career and life and made it the book. So I, I thought that is a cool perspective where he's like, look, I just shared what happened throughout my, my business life, yeah. my personal life, all that. And, and this is what you get out of it. So it is real. There's no 
like story to it. It just kind of goes through methodically his experiences. I actually, I found the format kind of hard though. I, when I first listened to it, we were actually, my wife and I were driving from Knoxville to Binghamton. So it's a, mm-hmm. you know, 11 hour drive. And I, uh, it was my turn to drive. So it was my turn to pick what was on the radio. And so I put the, the audible book on and we're listening to it. And Lisa's like, you know, the first hour, hour and a half. And she's like, who's this guy? Oh my gosh. Because the first hour, hour and a half of the book, on the Audible at least, it was like, this guy's jumping all over the place. He's mm-hmm. going, he's talking about Apple, then he's talking about Phillips, then he's back at Apple, he's back at Phillips. You know, it was, it, like, it was really kind of hard to follow. But it's the guy just telling his story, and I can actually relate to that. If I was going to write a book, I have no idea where to start. Right. You know, and, and the more you get into it, the more you're like, oh, and here's a, a good point about that. Oh, and here's a good point about that. So once you get, I think, a little bit further into the book, all of a sudden you start to really it's, it, the experiences he's talk talks about. If you've been through those experiences, they all of a sudden start to really resonate with you. And I was thinking, you know, the other day as we were prepping for today, I was thinking he is the difference between an entrepreneur and somebody who wants to have a business because they don't want to have a boss. Mm-hmm. He is what an entrepreneur is. He's a creator. Uh, he is following his passion. He is a missionary asshole, as we're going to get into. Yeah. Um, he's full speed ahead, like, and asking the right questions about the bigger picture. Yep. And I think he can engage a lot of different listeners at all different points in their career because one of the themes and we'll, we'll dig into it more throughout the season, but is, but he, he talks about it's okay to fail. It's okay to restart, right? Like <laughs> it doesn't matter what, what age you are, where you're in your career. If you're not, if things have changed and you have a different way to go, it's okay to restart and, and go in that direction. You got to be passionate about what you're doing. So I like that part of it too, as it, it, it applies to really anybody, I think. Yeah, he does give I, right in the beginning of the book. He gives a lot of really good insight for young people looking for to start their career. Yep. And you know, your your parents tell you go follow your heart, follow the things that you love, and you know, it's like yeah, but it, it's bigger than that. You need to make money and that type of stuff too. And so you follow your heart, but do you start at a small company? Do you start at a big company? What's the difference? I mean, he really gives great advice throughout the entire career journey. Um, if you're watching. I have a cup of tea, and I was just choking on the uh, the string from the tea fell in the cup. I went and took a drink, and the whole thing was the tea bag. So that's what I just pulled out of my mouth if you're watching us. Um, but when we first started doing Unleashing Leadership, one of the questions was, Travis, why don't you do the book Build? And I've put it off for five seasons, for the first five seasons. And you actually were like, let's do the book Build next. And so I was like, okay, it's time to do the book build. Um, but the the way that this book kind of came about for us is I uh, had listened to it. I don't. I think it was just by circumstance. It was just kind of like one of those recommended titles for me. Um, and then I was so blown away by it because I could relate so much to it. I then came back to our management team. I was like, everybody's got to read this book. Mm-hmm. So I'd be interested in uh, when I came back and I said, look, everybody's got to read this book, kind of as you read it, what was there anything that kind of really resonated with you with the situation that we were in at the time that was like, okay, I, I see why this book is powerful. Yeah, a lot of it was very relevant to, I think, what was or or is happening at Seed, where we we're constantly <clears throat> growing, evolving is probably a better word, evolving in what we're doing, you know, the services we we provide, what we're doing internally, how our people develop. We do have a lot of young people at Seed who are you know figuring things out in a career and professional setting, and they have a lot of ideas, they have a lot of goals, so. Every and then and then the other part of the book, kind of like the personal and how he talks about how he navigated through changes in career. That that was more of like a personal experience. And I put myself in that situation when I went through. And oh, okay, yeah, when I did this and I started in my career, 
it would have been great to have this book or it would have been great to have right, that right. bit of knowledge to kind of have a different perspective than what I understood at the time as a 20 year old. So all of that, um, what was, was I thought great. And then, uh, the part, and I know we'll dig into this, the whole manager versus in, individual contributor component that yeah. stuck out to me, stood out to me so much. Because well, we were I've going never... through that point. I mean, like that, yeah. like we were literally at that gateway of 30 or so employees, uh, you know, or getting to that point. And we were really struggling with the concept of manager versus individual contributor. Yeah. And what does that mean, especially when it's a startup and people are tr transitioning roles? And we were really struggling with that. And yep. not to interrupt you, but that was that was one of the things uh, that progression from a room full of friends doing something to um, really building a business and refreshing and coming up with the new iterations over and over and over again. And the um, growing requirements of what was needed to foster that, that was something that really resonated with me. And it actually made me a little bit intimidated to do the book because it is such, to me, it's such a personal book mm -hmm. because it's the, it, it, and just like you were saying, gosh, I wish I knew this, you know, yeah. kind of coming out of school and looking at my options and things. But as you get into kind of his journey and, and the way that he brings to light kind of each step of the way, the, you know, business is business. And, it, and it, at the different levels, there's um, falling outs and there's, you know, allies that turn to enemies and enemies that turn to allies and people who cross your path multiple times. And, you know, there's, there's a, a lot to the story, I think, mm -hmm. um, that if you've ever gone through really establishing something that is high growth, you're going to relate to it. Yeah. 